Good morning. My name is Molly Lockwood, and I'm a worship leader at Redeemer City Church. I'm married to Patrick Lockwood, who's the worship director, and it is my honor to share some reflection on our CBR reading for today, which is 2 Kings chapter 22. But this is a story of Josiah, and it really goes through chapter 23. So I'm going to share some thoughts on those two chapters together. But Josiah came to be king when he was eight years old. And he um, entered into a royal court that had been apostate for decades. So it kind of makes me wonder what his mother imparted to him. Um, Because as, as you'll see in this chapter, he was a king. He became a man who honored God and uh, who had a heart for the Lord. But what I think is so cool and what really struck me um, in studying this was that I think we see a really clear picture of what our church calls the J-curve in this story and in the life of Josiah. And the the J-curve, you're probably familiar with it, but um, we talk about it as a a dying and a rising with Jesus, uh, a movement from repentance or, or suffering or repentance uh, from sin um, toward looking to Jesus and looking toward God and rising with him in faith and love. Um, So this happened with Josiah. He was brought to repentance. He was brought low by the word of God. Um, His secretary and high priest read the word of God to him because they found the book. They found the law in the temple. And when they read it to him, he was cut to the core. He ripped his clothing and he was cut to the core and faith was ignited in him. <coughs> Excuse me. And he, um, the Bible says that he immediately, he responded and he said, go inquire of the Lord um, concerning the words of this book, concerning us. And then he was convicted by the law and he began to repent and he went throughout all the land uh, clearing out the idols and all who were involved in idol worship. And I thought this was particularly interesting. Some of the words associated with his repentance were, I made a little list, fire and ash, bones burning, broken pieces, reducing to dust. We see a picture here of repentance being really messy. (laughs) And I pondered how in my own life, repentance is often needs to be so much more than words to the Father. You know, it often looks messy. It might look like, you know, tearing down and burning burning bones and fire and ash and the destruction of idolatry in my own life. But after he repented, he, um, he went back to Jerusalem. And this, this was so cool to me. In, in verse 21 and 23 of chapter 23, he commanded that, they, that the people keep the Passover. And they hadn't celebrated the Passover in who knows how many years. But in the 18th year of King Josiah, the Passover was kept to the Lord in Jerusalem. How amazing that he chose to celebrate the feast that would remind them that a Passover lamb had been slain to atone for the sin of all of Israel, the sin of his fathers, and um, to remember that blood was put on their door, their doorposts so that the judgment of God would pass over them and they would not, um, they would not absorb the wrath of God. And it reminded me of, again, of that J curve, how we, um, we receive the word of God and it, it ignites faith in our hearts and it causes us to repent. And to do the hard work, that messy work that sometimes repentance requires. But then we move up and we, up that J-curve, we look at our Passover lamb who was slain, whose blood was shed so that we would not absorb the wrath of God or the penalty for our sin. It was already absorbed by Jesus, the Passover lamb. And this gives me so much hope today because like Josiah, I don't come from a long line of faithful followers of God. Um, but it gives me hope that if, if I repent, God will show me mercy and he will show me strong support, which is what Josiah's name means, Jehovah supports. So I hope that blesses you today, that you remember that, um, <clears throat> that God is ready to show mercy and grace to us.